I don't want to be a fucking bee anymore. Let's fucking go so I can get this shitty chapter of my life over with and wear normal fucking pants again. Yeah, but, uh... You're just a squirrel. You wouldn't understand. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Ava. Here to try and stop me, are you? Of course we are. It's time to put an end to this madness. How does she get into her clothes? She has, like, no fine manipulators. She's just like that. <laughs> She was born this way. Yeah, she, like, uses her magic gender changey powers to just have clothes on. She also, I put them on. Hair. You like the floofy hair? Love this hair. It's pretty floof. It is good hair. Madness? Ha! Huh. Can't you see what I'm trying to do here? The storm is our destiny. It's unlocking our potential and making us better. This is who we were truly meant to be. That's a load of shit. I hate being a fox girl. It totally sucks, and I demand you stop what you're doing right this instant. All those years of being ignored by you in that stupid weather lab, having my theories dismissed as crazy ideas. I knew I was right the whole time. Years? You only worked at the weather lab for six weeks, and you were on holidays for three of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was pretty good. You could have that one game. You have to acknowledge my genius now, don't you, Jessica? Look, I've managed to create my own storm. I control the weather. He's become the ultimate weatherman. Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? <laughs> she is the weather boy. It's only a matter of. It's. I thought I was going to say time. Whoops. I fucked up. It's, only, it's a... only a matter. It's only a matter <laughs> of the storm. Oh my god. Coke, are you okay? Uh, I'm sorry. They like had a good, like, a decent thing and then they just fucked it up so bad. <laughs> this sentence is really badly written, yeah? <laughs> no. Oh my the god. joke? The joke in the middle of the villain ramps? They had, like, the cute, like, little joke in there, right? Yeah. That was, like, you could see that happening in, like, an Avengers movie or some shit, right? Like, that's totally the kind of humor, like, they would go for. And it's like, wow, that was really cool. And then you just, like, maybe these people, like, maybe this wasn't so bad. And then, nah. It's only a matter of until my storm grows. Like that's such a bad sentence. Uh, just read the fucking line. I'm done. Okay. okay, it's only a matter of until my storm grows size and covers the entire planet. Then everyone will embrace their true forms, become animal girls, just like dragons are not animals. <laughs> I will completely reshape this world into its true potential. <laughs> See, this is why I was against the internship program. It didn't really work out for Lynn or Dinah either. No. <laughs> or, uh, shit, what were their original names? Uh, Derek, Derek and, and Liam. Liam. How on earth will you possibly stop me now, Jessica? I'm a dragon, and with the power of the storm behind me, I am unstoppable. <laughs> You know, it, it occurs to me, red eyes, black, black red eyes, black dragon. <laughs> Very cool game. <laughs> Suck on this. Oh, oh, ah, what the fuck? <laughs> What's happening? If you turn someone into a bee, then you should be prepared to face the consequences. Bitch. What happened? She stung her. Was there like an actual no picture for it? No. Of course not. Nope. <laughs> what did you do? 
I stung Ava with my stinger. Considering how these things hurt like a crazy when they form tiny little insects, imagine how badly a sting from a human-sized bee must hurt. Ow. It looks like she passed out from the pain. So is her white. Damn, that bee sting's gonna be itchy for weeks. Yeah, well, that's karma. I hope she brought a whole lot of shamalon. Sh Shamomili? Magic? Lynn's gonna die. <laughs> Best no, bro. It's, it's, she's not gonna die. She is. She's a bee. But the, the abdomen isn't housing all of her internal organs like an actual bee. Mm hmm. It's just more. It's more stingers. It's like fifty stingers. It's, a, it's just. It's just like reloads. Yeah. So Ava is out of picture now. Yep, I told you it would be easy. I know not to mess with you. That's for sure. Don't get on my bad side, which is the part behind me with the big ass B butt and the stinger. I can't wait to see what Ava is using to manipulate the storm with. My fire truck idea was pretty genius, but she must have come up with something pretty spectacular to overpower that. It's a squirt. <laughs> it's gotta be here somewhere. It's gotta be her gib. I, th I think it's it gonna... is. <laughs> it's gonna be the itch to go. <laughs> is that a fridge attached to a garden hose? <laughs> That's the same fridge from our old breaker room back at Abaddon Pharmaceuticals. <laughs> ah, that explains it. How does this how does this explain anything? I'll tell you about it, Wado. Just whip off that garden hose. Done. Natalia, tone on the fire engine. Here goes nothing. I'll be damn pleased to see the end of you, those fur freaks. That's for fucking sure. It's working. Oh, oh hey, the music's back. It is. Ooh, way to go, Natalia. Yes, my tail is gone, and so are my stupid fox ears. Huzzah! I'm not a freaking bee anymore. It feels so good to wear pants that fit again. I'll be so glad to get back to my regular male body. Being a girl was fun and all, but I'll, I'll be glad to be back to my original self. You weren't expecting to tone back into a guy this whole time, will you? Yeah, isn't that why we've been working so hard to stop the transformation storm and return the town to normal? We were just trying to stop everyone from being toned into animal clothes, Jessica. The gender transformation is permanent and irreversible. What? Didn't you hear what I said earlier? You can't undo the gender swap effects of the queen transformation class. That's why clinics use a modified form of the chaos. Animal ears is one thing, but everyone in the town is stuck as a woman now. Please tell me you're joking. Dinah, come back me up on this one. Wait, why does she have her animal features? Because she's slime now. True. What's up? You can undo the effects of the bubacalypse and turn everyone back to normal, right? You don't have to give don't you have to give everyone a new serum? We just did that. But I'm still a chick. Oh, that's permanent. What? But the whole town was transformed. Yeah, I sure as hell wouldn't want to own a men's clothing store in Titan's Point right about. We've invested all of our money into male's clothing store. <laughs> <laughs> our money is disappearing. Wait, what's that bit from? <laughs> That's from a German star video. <laughs> That's right. 
where they had like all the fucking uh where they had all the truck or the not the trucks the uh the tanks that's right. but they spawned them on like a different map so they just like exploded that can't be true <laughs> oh stop panicking so much you'll get used to it and so will everyone else it's not the end of lynn. the world lynn no that's not how it works everyone would have just gotten used to animal forms you're just like ava just get used to animal forms, forehead. Hey, Lynn, want to throw a big party on beach? We kind of deserve one, considering we did just save the town and everything. You want to know what's even funnier? Sounds like fun. What? Bree and Sophie are permanently transformed because they weren't here. Ripping peps. That's what you get for being a dick and abandoning your friends. But you didn't save the town at all. Things are still in a state of chaos. Hey, get back here! You've gotta be kidding me. Everyone here is stupid. I'm going home now. Ellipses. Ellipses. Ellipses? Why are we in Yale? What? Oh. Yale and Winter had a strange reaction to the storm, and ended up spending the week as a pair of fluffy guinea pigs. It's an experience that neither of them would like to speak of about too much, but as a result of the storm, the two of them have developed quite a fondness for cheese doodads. On the upside, the two of them are, t are able to communicate with each other simply by squeaking, which has come in handy more often than you'd think. Yale has only a has only has another semester left until he's she's finished her science degree, and she's made a solemn vow that she won't use her science powers for evil the way Diane and Lynn have. Suffice to, suffice to say, she won't be working in DNL Industries Lab. Although, after spending some time as an animal, Gail is finding the idea of specializing in animal science more and more interesting. Especially, it means she can make Dinah taste a bit of her own medicine. Winter had been talking about getting a cat recently. Okay, hey, let me do the next recap of a person. Alright. Yeah, we'll, we'll switch off. Okay. The, uh, like, yeah. Bree had, think, frankly, had enough of Dinah and Lynn's silliness. And with Sophie being conveniently transformed into a jellyfish girl, she decided to spend a week living in the ocean as a shark girl until the storm blew over. The two of them enjoyed the underwater scenery quite a bit, but the novelty wore off pretty quickly. After a week of eating fresh prawns and various small fish, they both decided to swear off seafood and spend all of their holidays on land now. Bree still works at the lab from time to time, but with Sophie just about to graduate from her nursing degree, She's thinking about moving away from Science Point <coughs> from Sirens Point for a while. That storm was the final straw for her, and she's looking for somewhere more peaceful to live. After experience in building an underwater research facility, she'll probably swap from the science career path to engineering. Someone's bound to want an underwater office somewhere. Sophie let her gym me membership lapse. <laughs> The okay. All right. She still can't look at exercise balls the same way. I don't get that part. There was like a throwaway line in one of them where Dinah made her boobs the size of exercise that's, balls. That's right. Naruto was out of town when the storm hit, as she was busy running her new store in the city. It's probably for the best after what happened with her little vampire incident a few years ago. After Marion Alian, she's become a full Australian citizen. But at the moment, the two of them are currently living apart while Elian finishes university. Naruto's got herself a new hairstyle and a brand new wardrobe, and she's currently facing the perils of being a small business owner in the big city. There's been a few douchey store owners and the crime rate is way higher, but she's enjoying herself. Unlike Naruto, Aliane was in town when the storm hit, and she was one of the rare few who had a really bizarre reaction to the green rain that swept throughout the city. Through the city. Rather than being turned into an animal girl, Aliane was transformed into a human-plant hybrid, with green skin and flowers for hair. She was actually quite striking to look at, and it wasn't a bad week for her. Being unable to eat food was pretty frustrating, and she was getting pretty sick of sitting outside and photosynthesizing all day. It was relaxing at first, but it became dead boring after hour five. Now that she's back to normal, Alian is finishing up her university degree. She'll be finished in another year, and after graduating, she'll move to the city with her partner, Naruto. You won't find Alian eating a salad nowadays, though. 
she's on a 100% meat diet right now. What with the guilt of eating her own kind and all. Mostly, she just eats bacon now, so she's not complaining. Everyone loves bacon. <laughs> okay. Steph is now permanently stuck in her original female form. Her days of swapping between a guy form and girl form, depending on her mood, are long behind her. She's not complaining, however. Peeing while standing up was fun and all, but it cancelled out by the fact that men's public bathrooms are absolutely disgusting. She might not be able to tackle shoplifters now, but she can still kick them in the nuts and get the job done. Thankfully, Steph seems to be blocked into human form too, which is a relief because Dinah has a bit of... became a bit obsessed with her cowgirl form. Dinah and Steph had shapeshifted each other into all sorts of things before, but Dinah's reaction to her cow form was way over the top. Steph had actually been... was actually pretty furious about the whole thing. Dinah didn't seem to care about her feelings on the matter at all. Anyway... Cow-related drama aside, Steph is doing pretty well for herself. CBT Security offered her a full-time job, and she's been looking into getting a home loan to buy a place for herself. She's considering buying a house uh, together with Dinah. What? One sec. The screen froze. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Are you back? Uh-oh. It broke again. <clears throat> God damn it. Why did you break it? Why did you break? All right. Uh, All right. She's considering back. buying a house together with Dinah, but that's all. That all depends on how she behaves those next few weeks. If Steph wakes up one morning with udders again, there's going to be hell to pay. <laughs> they only Allison can't. broke her leg again. They only had the one sprayed. <laughs> <laughs> this time, it was due to a trampoline stunt gone horribly, horribly wrong. Trampolines and unicycles don't mix. It's a miracle she didn't die. I'm sad. I didn't get to read more. At first, Lily was frustrated about Quelf being turned into girls. Max Heart Studio was only meant to have one girl band, and El Mitless was there first. They were just trying to leech off their popularity. There's been quite a lot of arguments between the two groups at first, but a few weeks... But after a few weeks, things began to sell down. Their crossover concert went well, and Lily found herself growing closer to the Vixen girls. Lily is now dating both the twins at the same time, which is perfectly fine because the twins aren't actually related to each other. That was just a marketing stunt Jane came up with. <laughs> right now, they're working on a collaborative song together, but their recording sessions actually devolve into orgies after the first hour, so it'll probably be some time until that single is available for purchase. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's a good question. Wait, who's this character? I don't know who this is. Hey. Can't be anyone important. Let's move on. Get back here. My life is just as interesting as everyone else. I, uh, I bought a hat the other day. You bought a hat? Oh my god. Are you gonna wear it? Is it a funny hat? I wanna see the funny hat! Hey, don't leave me out. I demand to be recognized. Put on the funny hat and I will recognize you. No? Too bad. <laughs> oh god. Vixen's butt wiggle dance quickly became a viral hit, and their music video was imitated by hundreds of thousands of teenage girls worldwide. It would end up racking up over 40 million views online which was enough to finance a new pool and water slide for Max Heart Studios. Vixen's butt dance wiggle became so popular that they were able to launch an international tour, which was the first for Max Heart Studios. The tour was initially very successful, but they were publicly humiliated after coming in last place in an international dance-off held in South Korea. Their reputation took off a massive, took a massive hit, and even though they're doing quite well for themselves now, their 15 minutes of mega fame are over. Don't feel too bad for them, though. All of them are still pulling in seven income salaries each year. They'll manage. That's over. That's a million. Ugh, I fucking hate them. Yeah, it's Damn. new Dan, too. It's Dan. You know what? I'll let you read Dan. I'll get two after this. It's Dan. I love Dan. Look at him. Look at Dan. It's Dan. What is there to say? 
Dan and Fred weren't affected by, affected by the boobocalypse, as Dan was on a national tour with Elementless and Fred was busy providing security and beating off rabid fans from the anti-swarming stick. Fred loved that stick. It was probably a good thing Fred missed out on being permanently stuck as a woman like the rest of the men in Siren's Point, as Dan and Fred are both planning on settling down and starting a family soon. It's still early days yet, but Dan's had a positive pregnancy test and things seem to be coming along just fine so far. Lily and the rest of El the Elementless girls are ridiculously excited about the idea of Dan becoming a mother, because they've already picked out a bunch of names for the baby. Dan and Fred are probably going to take over the naming duties though, because most of the names the girls came up with were a little unorthodox. Seriously, who would name their kid JSSI4A? RE slash 5 dash ECCA is a much better name. That's probably the one we'll go with. Or T2XB4Y if it's a boy. The fuck? Also, just just a. I'm so happy for just Dan. Just a callback. Yeah? Yeah, I'm happy for Dan. Also, a callback. Of when we were doing Dan, and I was telling you, Fred gets to impregnate all of the helmetless people. I guess. <laughs> he's starting with Dan. He's, he started. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good job, Fred. Good job, Dan. Alyssa was transformed into a panda girl during the storm. It ended up being surprisingly difficult to track down fresh bamboo in a coastal city like Sirens Point. That. That. No. Pandas are carnivores. She could have just ate meat. The Maybe. only reason they eat bamboo is because of their geo, uh, their the place that they lived, and they evolved to have to eat that. They didn't even evolve to eat it. It's just they grew a likeness. <laughs> like they were fed it as babies by their parents because their parents had to eat it. Could All you that say that they got ate meat? This game doesn't know shit. You'd think there'd be plenty. They, there'd they, be plenty they got, of they got such bamboozled. As Bamboozled. Huh? Bamboozled. <laughs> At hardware stores and the like, but it was all treated and nothing was edible. Everything else got, everyone else got to try out new amazing foods in their animals. But Alyssa missed out. She was kind of, kind of bummed out about that. But with everyone in town being transformed into animal girls for a week, the demand for kimono clinics dropped. The demand for kimono clinics dropped dramatically, and Alyssa had to give up her newest part-time job. She briefly considered moving with. Zara and working at her game store, but Zara was still focused on wearing ridiculous outfits to work every day. That pink harem getup of hers was impressive, but not the sort of thing Alyssa could bring herself to wear. At least not in public. Maybe Alyssa would go for the job at Boxers Gaming working on their virtual reality MMO. She'd worked with Netcode before, so it couldn't be that complicated. At least she wouldn't have to wear a silly outfit. And then I got one more, I remember. Mm -hmm. Jane won $50 on an instant lottery ticket last week. <laughs> she used the money to buy herself a new sandwich press because her old one broke. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you want to read this one too? Yes, th thank you. Anita still hunts demons every night, and she's made she's had moderate success so far. She's managed to purge a few people of their demonic essence and revert them to their human form. But sometimes it feels like she's fighting a losing battle. Most people seem most people seem to be enjoying their time as demon girls, and generally they're pretty pissed off when Anita turns them back to normal. Most of them end up turning themselves back into demons a few days later. Anita's grandparents have been pretty adamant about how the about how evil the demonic races were, but honestly, they didn't seem to be doing that much wrong. Most of the succubi just go to parties and hook up with each other on Saturdays, and that's about it. There certainly hasn't been any murder or anything, and Anita is probably going to stop her crusade pretty soon. It's starting to feel really, really pointless. Hell, she might even take Natalia up on her offer and become a succubi herself. Their horns do look awesome, and being able to fly would be fun. What's the harm? It's not like the world is in peril or anything. Not yet. Again. Fren... Fernesca? Francesca? Has made an absolute fuck ton of money. Her boutique always did pretty well for itself. 
But when a town's population are all transformed into women, there's a hell of a lot of money to be made for in the fashion industry. Francesca had had to hire four more staff members, and her cosplay costumes were selling like hotcakes, including that one cosplay outfit that was for the same reason shaped like a hotcake. But the commissioner was very particular about their order, and Francesca wasn't going to argue with good money. <laughs> She's thinking of expanding her operation, and Francesca is secretly hoping another gender swap storm happens somewhere else along the coast so she can open a second store there. Having two swimming pools and trampoline room is great and all, but she'd really like a moat. <laughs> Who the fuck is Gavin? I guess we didn't get to him because we only did one route for each person. Was Gavin, like, the dude from, like, Aline's route? Was he the dude that we were gonna try to bone, but then we decided to bone Naruto instead? Yeah, that's right. Probably. I don't fuck. I don't know. Gavin looked way too similar to all of the other guys. Ryan in particular. He even has the same color t-shirt as him. I kept getting them mixed up. And I'm the writer, so I ended up not using him in the game. It was, oh, wait, maybe he wasn't. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. Cool. Thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> thanks, Gavin. Thanks for the best. <laughs> Gavin or Google, Google or Gavin, which one said it? Let's find out. After being transformed into a chick, Hunter decided that he'd start training for athletics again. Despite being gender switched, quite a lot of his muscle mass carried across and he ended up becoming quite a formidable women's athlete. Gender swapping hasn't phased Hunter too much, but she does miss being able to swim shirtless at the pool. Women's swimsuits are fine and all, but it's just not the same. It's, it's just a dude with a pussy, that's it. <laughs> oh god damn it. Oh god, you can kind of see the tits, I think. Mm. Oh god. Sadly, even being permanently transformed into a chick and wearing a skimpy, skimpy bikini to work wasn't enough to salvage JoJo's nightclub. There was talk of a foam party, but it never happened in the night time. nightclub closed down for good. Due to a number of sexual harassment lawsuits, Jack wasn't able to return to his old job at Abaddon Animal Ears. He is currently in a massive amount of debt, and as of right now, he can't see a way out. There's a part of him that's thinking of becoming a stripper. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. Jasmine is absolutely loving her life as a demon girl, but a town full of girls just wasn't cutting it for her. Although she can leech sexual energy off people of any gender, men are more fun, so she ended up moving out of town. Sleeping with dudes isn't the only thing... Isn't the only thing Scarlet gets up to, though. That's not Scarlet. That's Jasmine. Mm hmm in her spare time, she ended up inventing a new type of windmill that won several awards at a local agricultural expo and drew the interest of several foreign investors. Like we said, what's a what's a spell check? I don't know. She's currently working on scaling up her design from a prototype stage to full-scale production. She's confident it'll change the way crops are grown throughout the country, but even if it doesn't, she'll still make some money by selling the patent. That what windmills don't help crops grow? They do though. No? How? I don't know. The, the science game said they do, so they must. Okay. Ava was forced to apologize to everyone in town, and she was pretty miffed that her plan failed. A lot of people were very angry at her, and, pe and people were really rude to her on social media websites. <laughs> oh, look, she's crying. No. <laughs> this didn't really get her down too much, though. Because for some reason, she managed to remain in her awesome dragon form, even after coming into contact with the reversal, reversal serum like everyone else. She found this strange, so she tracked down Sirens Point resident expert on all things strange and supernatural. Dinah, the dinosaur. No? Oh. <laughs> Duh, you're a demon. I'm... I'm a demon. You've got claws for hands, and half your body is covered in scales that double as armor. Aren't I just an animal girl? <laughs> and what animal are you supposed to be exactly? Um, a hot one. I guess some sort of lizard. Or a dragon? You're a demon, sweetie. Just like me. 
That's kind of awesome. Can you run me through how you were transformed exactly? Did you come into contact with anything strange prior to starting the storm? Oh, 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 oh! Oh? Well, there was one thing. It was really, really freaky. Oh. I don't learn. No. No. What? No. No. <laughs> God, big fucking damn it. Mark is currently. Wait, that's not Mark, that's Steph. There we go. <laughs> Mark still runs the security business, but after him and all of his staff were transformed into women, he had to order a new set of uniforms, and they were surprisingly expensive and not as good as the old ones. CBT security played a heavy part in the cleanup operations after the bubacalypse, and it ended up being a really good networking experience for Mark. He was introduced to a lot of business owners throughout the town, and as a result of that, he's been able to double the size of his operation. His cat Jennifer is doing fine too. Wait. Okay. Yeah. No one's seen Mercy and Ruth in Sirens Point for a while, and that's probably for the best. They've got their hands full de dealing with problems of their own. And if they saw what happened with the Boopocalypse, they'd have a massive freak out. It's best they don't know about that little incident. Because they're, uh, they're gender-bending, uh, deniers, and they will transform you back if you get transformed. Professor Stephen Booth and his brothers weren't even aware the, that the Boopocalypse happened. Because it was the end of the current university trimester, and they spent their entire weeks located or locked, locked in their rooms, creating papers. Quite a lot of students sent them emails asking for extensions on their assignments on account of being transformed into animal girls, but the lecturers didn't check their emails until after exam results were released. 95% of the students failed that trimester and had to repeat their studies the following year. The university made a fortune. I'd fucking sue that university. That's so <laughs> real, though. <gasps> yes. Wait, where did you see this? It was behind the fridge in a break room up at the university. Seriously? You saw a portal. It was so damn freaky, but it just goes to show how there's something supernatural tied up with all these transformations. I'm guessing that's where all the transformation food came from in the first place. That's why I realized that there was actually a purpose to the storm. It wasn't just random chaos. Such a shame I couldn't get the storm to reach its full power. Back up. Go back to the part about the portal. Did someone say portal? Ava's found one. You're kidding. Okay, so it's a portal. A portal? See, yes. It's just, it's, it's just here. Holy crap. You found it. We're going in. Or are we going in? Damn right we are. Ava, you're coming too. You're a dreaming. You can make the trip. Um, is this a good idea? Trust me. You're going to want to go. She's right. Let's move. Um, okay. Yeah, see, Ava's the best. <laughs> Ava was going to get plenty of opportunity to test out her new dragon ability. Natalia's brother Dominic had already been transformed into a chick a few years ago by Dino, but the gender swap storm ended up triggering his latest demonic abilities his latent demonic abilities, and he ended up transforming into a succubus like his sisters. Because his powers came from a demonic lineage, Dino and Jessica stopping the storm didn't cause him to return to normal, so right now he's permanently stuck as a succubus. Natalia's been treating her new sister as one of her apprentices, so she'll get the hang of things in a few hundred years or so. <laughs> Those are just tentacles. They don't get an epilogue. At least, not one I'm prepared to write about here. Let's move on. This is the best epilogue I've ever seen. 
Hey, look Saliva at is a piece Ugh. of shit and deserves nothing. Get her off my screen. Fuck her. And I hate her. She's the worst person ever. She's actually horrible. She deserves to die the worst death possible. No one cares. She she deserved to be skinned. Something about her getting skinned and eaten. She fucking deserves it. She deserves everything that comes to her. Look at that nice duck behind her. I care more about that duck behind her than I care about Sylvia. Because she's a fucking asshole and deserves to die. Yes. Zara's business is still going strong. Especially since she moved to her new location in the city. She's still continuing her, tr her tried and true method of wearing ridiculous outfits to bring in customers. And so far it's working. Living in the city is a bit tough, and there is a much higher crime rate to deal with, but there's a massive cosplay convention coming up with Lexi, which Lexi is very excited about. Lexi moved to the city with Zara, She's just where she's joined a large cosplay circle. Her sewing skills need some work, but she's got enthusiasm, and everyone there loves her. Whoops. Oh. Did you, like, go to the next sentence? I did. God fucking damn it. Why? Did it break? Oh, wait. No. There we go. Okay. She's also been thinking about starting a family with Zara, but that's still in the early stages. They don't have anything to announce just yet. Kitty Hawk still goes to conventions, and I actually met her and got a photo together with her once, so that was pretty cool. Finally, you get the one sentence fucking line. <laughs> Nadine and Russell managed to avoid the storm, and after a two-week vacation in Fiji, they came back to a town full of women who had spent a week as animal girls. They were initially terrified that they'd lose their market of animal eaters, but thanks to Jessica, Dinah, and Lynn's efforts, all of the girls in town were returned to regular humans. Surprisingly, it turned out that the vast majority of these girls wanted their animal features back, and Nadine and Russell made an absolute killing. And with this money, they were able to expand their empire. Abaddon ears. Well, shit. I forgot. It's Abadabadabadon. Abadabadabadon. Animal ears. Now has 48 transformation clips located in various cities across the country. And they show no sign of slowing down. It's only a matter of time until they take their operation global. Oh. <coughs> oh my gosh. It's Victoria. I love her. She's adorable. Victoria's virtual reality MMO had a programming error that resulted in several hundred players being stuck in the game for three months. She w should have known that would have happened. Thankfully, there weren't any casualties, and it ended up being a massive publicity stunt for the game. Prior to the incident, the game was losing money left, right, and center, and Victoria had even considered making the game free to play. However, there was a massive surge in numbers of players since that day, and boxes made an absolute fortune. They're already starting pre-production of the game's fourth expansion pack. <laughs> Hopefully, no one gets stuck in the game this time. All right, Kirito. Jessica is still angry that she stuck as a woman for the as a woman for the rest of her life. Other people she knows seems to be adapting pretty well, and maybe she'll feel differently in a few years. But as of this moment, she's just mostly pissed off. And even though she won't admit it, part of her kind of misses having those big floppy fox ears she had during the storm, and she's really considering booking an appointment at a kimono clinic to get her tail back. You're banned. She's also thinking about moving to somewhere a bit more sensible. She's had enough of Siren Point and its silliness. Oh. Oh. Oh okay, my. Okay, they're they're wearing they're wearing bikini bottoms. Yeah. Is this what she kids wanted? I mean, they there look kind of fat kiddos. and even lit. Yeah, it happens. As for Din and Lot. As for Dinah and Lynn, they spend their Dinah. afternoons oh. drinking cocktails on the beach Dinah. of their private island. So I'm thinking we should open an amusement park. Wait, seriously? Wasn't the whole point of this island to get away from civilization? <laughs> yeah, but I'm so bored. I want to transform random people into stuff. And how would opening an amusement park help with that? I'll work it into theming. We'll build a series of gates that transform people as they move between different areas of the park. We'll have mermaids in the pool area, 
can turn people into nagas for the Arabian themed area, insect people for the forest themed air rides. You don't turn people into insects. Fine, they can be woodland creatures then. Dino, you're insane. Insanely us. I do like the idea of a mermaid poke though. See? This is why I'm in charge of coming up with ideas. Ending one of one. Oh yeah, thanks. We did it. It's it's well, it. We, it's over. We're we're done. But that's all of Gender Bender DNA Twister Extreme. Now, for the real question, besides Dan, because I know you'll say Dan, who's your favorite character? Uh, Victoria. Really? Yeah. With her, like, fucking weird hair? Yeah, she's cute. Her hair's really weird. Your hair's weird. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Who's, who's your favorite? Well, now? Yeah. It's Ava. Ava? Yeah. Yeah. All right. But man, what was what was in that portal? At least they we'll told us what was behind the fridge. It's probably going to be explained in the other games. Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? Oh, see you in four years when we get around to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, see you in twenty twenty three. Yeah, this is this is Goku Dog Z. Find find out on the next episode of Goku Ball Z.